Hey there, Internet. I'm cutting to the chase this week. Let's talk about Naruto 670. So, as the title kind of pretty much kind of appeared, appeared upon this chapter, they're talking about the beginning, or kind of retelling us all about the beginning all over again, especially with the good news that necessarily Naruto is dead and that he kind of believes that he is, even though he's been to, he's been to this place plenty plenty of times to talk to Kurama. Um, once the Sage of Six Path, the Sage of Six Pass, Hagoromo comes over and tells him pretty much that he isn't dead and that goes through all these philosophical things and honestly basically tells him that uh, you are perfectly fine and that you will be waking up soon. And most of that really depends upon the people who are still out in the living world who kind of have your body at the moment. The uh, For you to come back, all that depends on them. And Naruto kind of shows his it kind of shows his idiocy here because he doesn't really understand a word that he's saying, especially when it comes to simple things of him introducing himself and basically telling him that uh, he is dead. And that is the biggest, that is Naruto in a nutshell of them pretty much just making him dumb for the sake of comedy. And it really didn't work for me too much, but honestly, you know, that's kind of what they have decided to focus on more. But going off from that, going into what this episode was really about of them kind of painting the initial goal or the initial idea that of them constantly keep on saying this in which that in which that uh, Mr. Goro himself told Naruto that uh, he reminds him of his of his second son Ashura um because he was in a sense a good for nothing a person who didn't have natural skill or at least they did have skill and they did have a have a potential and they had all this stuff they just couldn't use it right away they had to build themselves up join in with other other people cooperate and grow larger in which that's why he said that Naruto reminds him of, of his second son and that he knows full well how that his life is in which Naruto pretty much scoffs at and says pretty much I figured that you were going going to say that going on going on from that though they do tend to kind of Again, paint paint uh, paint the idiom in which that the character, or at least the person, such as Naruto, in which that Ashura he did have a mode to transform into that um, um uh, the like Ten Tails mode, just like how Naruto does, or his Biju mode or whatever. He turns into that and fights his brother Indra, who, in a sense, his ultimate mode looks a lot like the. It looks a lot like, um, I forget the name of it, um, Izanami, um, um, uh, Izanami, it looks a lot, it looks a lot like that, I mean, wait, is that Amaterasu? I forget, but the gigantic beast thing, his, his looks just like that, and he's talking about how like that this thing is supposed to be a destined battle between the person who does have skill compared to the person who doesn't have skill and has a lot of, and has a lot of friends. In a sense, this entire episode pretty much is just kind of it kind of solidified the the entire message of what Naruto is in which that a lot of people till now they kind of really haven't been paying too much attention to it. Now, honestly, I'm skimming over a lot here, especially since 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 the part of like, you know, this thing it could be read so many ways in which that Naruto is in fact the reincarnation of Ashura, which that honestly I found that to be kind of silly because the only reason why that Naruto could Naruto could even do his Biju mode was because I believe he had the blessings of all of all of the other tail beasts, but then he could do that beforehand. It's it's really hard to say, but I really don't accept the whole thing of him being a reincarnation because that's just kind of just thrown there lazily. But honestly, the biggest message of Naruto so far, in which that has been happening throughout every single flashback so far, has been the fact that there have always been two ninjas. Always have been two ninjas, okay? And they have been always really, really great at, at whatever they do, and it's always because one is naturally talented, and you can look at this for like everybody, such as like going on from going from Kakashi to Hash um, to Hashirama to 
to honestly the Rockley story to pretty much most 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 of the major stories so far, which is the people, or at least I or or, or at least I would say Neji in this case, the, the people who don't who have natural skill and, and don't and don't have to train all that much. And then comparing them to the people who do have to work hard, such as, you know, your Naruto, your Rock Lee, you know, your, or at least Hashirama, I believe he did have, have to work for his, you know, stuff like that. But it goes, it kind of has the idiom of saying like, yeah, these two ninjas, they, they're always great. One is naturally talented and the other one has to train su super hard to reach this, this one's level and this one doesn't train because he feels as though that he's better already and they and as it goes the the more talented one is always the villain or in this case you know they do switch around every now and again and the less talented one always has to be the good guy so you know, again they switch it around every time again but that is the idea and as it stands, it's like you've been can you you have been telling us this same story for like so long now. I mean, everything in 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 Shippuden has been finitely linked to the Sage's Six Paths at this moment now. Or at least everything has been. It's not a bad thing, but it's something that I'm starting to notice, and I'm kind of and it's slowly starting, man, to kind of come together and wish that this show was one gigantic repeat button so there is that for honestly if you feel I'd like that I'm not talking too much about about the chapter itself well really there really wasn't all that much it was just a exposition dump of pretty much what of what is going to happen in the future and what Naruto's major role is going to be which that which that if you watch um, uh, Naruto and you watch Naruto Shippuden and you've been watching this chapter I mean you have been following this for a super long time, you kind of already knew what was going to happen. So that's pretty much what I got to say about that. What do you guys think about it? Please tell me down there in the comment section. I'll catch you on the next John Gray show. So please keep watching anime, keep playing video games. I'm sorry for making this over seven minutes. All right, I'm out.